first up, so there was this blind item that was revealed, which is basically uh, like a, I mean, I guess I would describe it like similar to like Reddit, but it's more of like an anonymous tip that like people are just like, ooh, like here's a little secret that I'm just going to post onto onto the inter interweb ethers, ethos. And um, there was one about the Real Housewives. And it basically implied, or not even implied, it said that there is a Real Housewife who has a child currently that was out of an affair that her husband had. So housewife and her hubby, hubby has an affair, has a baby mama out there. And then I guess whatever, we don't know what details happened between him and the mistress. But what we do know is that after they had the baby, the housewife and her husband decided to adopt the baby. And apparently the mistress either gave up her rights or was paid off or who knows how the baby ended up into their custody. But there is a rumor that it is one of the housewives, which made a lot of people start to speculate. Well, which husband had an affair? Who stepped out? What's the baby? And we started like really analyzing everybody. And so this is what the internet, this is what all the Bravo fans have come up with. Some originally guessed that maybe it was Lisa Vanderpump from Beverly Hills and that it was probably her son, Max, and that he was probably from an affair that Ken had, because as we know, Max is adopted. And... I mean, Ken is a bit of a, he's a bit of a player. And Lisa Vanderpump has been very open about that. I don't think she's ever admitted to him cheating on her necessarily. But I mean, it kind of checks out because Max is adopted. Um, I don't think Max, well, he kind of looks like Ken. I don't think he looks like Ken all that much. But I mean, it's not ruled out in the realm of possibility. We also know that when Max went looking for his birth parents on Beverly Hills, on Real Housewives, that he wasn't able to really find anything. Lisa was very distraught when she, when he wanted to go look for his birth parents. So I think that's probably why this may be false because Lisa kind of did have the whole waterworks and she was really effectively heard and they were we were able to follow that journey on camera. I don't think Lisa would have allowed that journey to play out on camera had she known the origin of his pregnancy, had she known where that he really was born out of an affair that Ken had. I don't think Lisa would have allowed that to go on national television and to have Max find out that way. So I think I'm going to veto Lisa Vanderpump, Max, and Ken being the possibility. Next up we have, which was my original guess, that was Joe and Teresa from Real Housewives of New Jersey. We know Joe has cheated several times. Jacqueline admitted at the reunion that that Joe is basically sleeping around town all throughout Jersey, spreading his seat everywhere he goes. Now, I originally thought Gabriella. I was like, she doesn't look like Teresa. She doesn't really look like the other girls. We don't see much of her. We don't see much of her journey. It seems like Teresa isn't as emotionally attached to her. We see Teresa being very very emotionally attached to Gia and to Melania, also to to baby um, Adriana. So I think Gabriella is a strong contender to be the baby at a wedlock, the mistress baby. Um, she does. So people were found photos of Joe and his mother when she was younger. And Gabriella does look a lot like Joe's mom. So I think it's definitely Joe's child, whether or not it's Teresa's baby. We don't know. This was also, I believe, um, Adriana was the baby we saw her pregnant with and the one that we saw her give birth to because Adriana is the youngest. So we didn't really see what went on with Gabriella. We know that the Judices definitely thought that they could play a game with us with smoke and mirrors and that they could get away with a lot of this stuff. I think Gabriella, Joe, Teresa, I think that's a strong possibility. I have not rolled that out. Next up, we have Denise Richards and Charlie Sheen. Real Houses of Beverly Hills. Also a possibility. People are saying that uh, Eloise, which is Denise Richards' youngest daughter, who also has special needs, she is likely some some people were guessing that it was likely Charlie's daughter out of one of you know his hookups or it could have been like one of the prostitutes that he was sleeping with I don't know but he they're saying that he likely well I guess I don't know if that would be considered an affair then right because they're he's an ex and they weren't really necessarily together when Eloise would have happened so that's why I think this one uh, I think I'm going to swipe left and and rule out Denise Richards and Charlie Sheen because according to the blind item, it is it was an affair that was had. And we know that at the time Eloise was conceived, Charlie and Denise weren't together. 
They had already been broken up. He had already been going. They'd been going. They'd been co-parenting, had kids together. There was a lot going on. But I don't think that it's Denise and Charlie because they weren't actually together at the time when Eloise was was um, was conceived. So I don't think it was. I don't think so. I also don't think Charlie Sheen, especially at the time when he could have gotten a woman pregnant if that was, you know, when he was in his crazy tiger blood mindset. I don't think he would have allowed Denise Richards to adopt the baby. She did say to Oprah uh, shortly after that it took her about a year and a half to go through that process. And it did very much feel like it was a process that she actually went through because she wanted to, she wanted another child. Now we get into the next one, which is Real Housewives of Dallas, Brandy Redman. And people are speculating that her son, Bruin, is actually who the blind item was referring to, which also kind of connects to why she may have recently quit Real Housewives of Dallas, which has yet to be confirmed, but is still kind of up in the air. So Brandy and her husband, Brian, adopted their son, Bruin, uh, yes, Bruin, like the like the UC. I, it feels so weird to say that because every time I say Bruin, I just think of like UCLA, which is like a really weird aside. Anyway, so she's adopted. She adopted Bruin, and even when she spoke out, I think it was an uh, an exclusive she gave to People Magazine where she talked about the adoption. She in that interview said that she wasn't interested in adoption, that she wasn't um, that that wasn't really a, a reality or a possibility. That what ended up happening was she was having fertility issues and they were trying to conceive it wasn't able to happen for them and then eventually they weren't even pursuing adoption so they weren't on any lists they weren't talking to any adoption agencies but according to brandy this miracle child came from one of her friends that was um connected to uh that uh, was connected to some social workers that were having a hard time finding a home for a baby boy apparently according to what brandy said this is also a little bit of a stretch. So I just want to say that like, you know, this is a little bit of a stretch, but this is some of the chatter that's online that um, apparently the agents or that the social worker was having a hard time finding a home because a lot of families weren't looking to adopt a baby boy. They were only looking to adopt girls at the time. Sounds a little convenient. Um, but that I guess they were just like, hey, Brandy, we heard that you were having trouble wanting a baby. Would you want this baby? I know you haven't really considered adoption. I know you've said that you aren't really for adoption at this time in your your marriage and with your family and on your journey. But I don't know. It just seemed a little too convenient. It seemed a little bit of a strange story. But she's claiming that that's how Bruin came into their lives. It was a call from a friend because there was a social worker that was having a hard time finding a home for Bruin. And then they just fell in love with him and decided to adopt him. Um, they're also saying that Bruin does have uh, does have a lot of traits from Brian and Brian's family that he definitely looks like Brian's family and that that's a possibility that this could very likely be Brian's son. Now, the blind item had been circulating for a couple of years. Uh, it resurfaced. The rumor resurfaced again very recently. I believe it was last week. And that's when everyone really started speculating that it was Brandy and Brian's baby Bruin that was uh, the blind I that the blind item was referring to. So as that as those rumors started to circulate and that chatter happened, Brandy Redman then went on Instagram and she didn't explicitly say I'm leaving or quitting Real Housewives of Dallas, but was more of just like, I have decided to choose happiness. I've decided to choose my family. And I have decided that moving forward, I'm going to um, prioritize my family. Like it was a very vague message that I guess a lot of people just assumed because she also like was like, thank you for following our journey for so many years. I'm going to focus on my family now. So it wasn't like a direct I'm quitting, I'm leaving. And so people are saying maybe because this rumor was coming out and I don't think it's coming out on the actual show because I... I mean, unless there was like a rumor that somebody else mentioned in passing and now that they're getting towards the end of the season and seeing the final episodes and getting ready to tape the reunion, she found out that maybe somebody else had brought it up on the show. And that's why the blind item resurfaced is because it's going to be coming out through Real Housewives of Dallas. I don't know. I don't know how it's necessarily connected, but it does seem like this was an abrupt decision that Brandy made and posted. Now, Stephanie... Um, 
Stephanie, her BFF on Real Housewives of Dallas, also came out and she's like, the rumors aren't true. Infidelity is not true. Brandy's been through a lot. Her marriage has been through a lot. Like, please don't, you know, spread these lies or rumors about them. So she's denying it. Brandy hasn't actually addressed the rumors herself, but Stephanie's denied that this is true. And Brandy hasn't really said anything about the rumors or about her participation in Real Housewives of Dallas moving forward. A source did come out. So according to page six, there's a source close to production that says that Brandy is still very much a part of the show. What does that mean exactly? I mean, obviously, she has her contractual obligations to still film possibly some additional confessionals. Um, she's contractually obligated to do the reunion, even though we're now seeing that a lot of housewives are kind of just bailing on doing the reunion. We saw, I mean, it's primarily in, in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills that they're dipping out. But we have seen a lot of, or Jacqueline Larita on New Jersey, Luann on New York, but again, Luann was in rehab. But so we we see the housewives aren't obligated to actually show up at these reunions from what from what history has told us. So I I'm not sure if Brandy's going to be at the reunion or what's going to happen, but it does seem like the timing of the rumors coming out and the timing of her seemingly wanting to leave the show. I think she'll probably end up fulfilling her obligations that she's again contractually obligated to fulfill. She'll probably come to the reunion, likely deny the rumors about the infidelity and about the baby being Brian's biologically. And I don't know. Who knows what's gonna happen? But I don't I don't envision Brandy coming back for another season. I don't think she'll be back for season six because even Stephanie, when she was doing interviews a few weeks ago, even said that she was surprised that Brandy came back for season five because she was considering leaving at the time. It doesn't, I don't know what's going to come later or what drama Brandy's going to be involved in. I hear that her and Tiffany Moon have a really rough road this season. So we'll see what ends up happening. I, I don't think she'll be back for another season. I think that's kind of what she was implying is that this will be her last season on the show and that she's moving on. And that's why production is, a, or the source co- close to production is able to say, oh, well, you know, she's still very much part of the show, which, because, yeah, she, her episodes are still going to air on the show moving forward. And I'm sure she has a few loose ends to tie up before she's able to, like, fully depart. But I don't think she'll come back for another season. Oh, hey, it's me, Zach Peter. And are you still here watching? Because if you are, that means you're going to want to hit that subscribe button below and that little bell so that you get a notification every time I got some hot tea ready to be spilled. But not only that. Yes, I have all of these amazing videos here on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash JustPlainZach. But I also have full podcast episodes available on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora. Hashtag no filter with Zach Peter is available everywhere podcasts can be downloaded. So go and download it and subscribe because you're, you're going to want to stay up to date and get full episodes that are ready for you to consume and devour and get all of that latest hot tea. You're going to want to know like when Erica Jane goes to prison, allegedly, maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but you're not going to know if you're not subscribed. So go subscribe here and on on iTunes and Spotify and Pandora, all the places. Just do it because, you know, I love you and I love that validation.